One of the fundamental issues for African Americans has long been education. That is the education of our children. You look at where we stood when it comes to coming out of slavery, going through Jim Crow into present day. It has always been about education. But the question also comes in, where does school choice come in? Is that the black choice? Well, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, a uh, Republican from South Carolina, uh, he is pushing what is called the Choice Act that will expand the options given to families when it comes to educating their children. And he joins us right now on News One Now. Senator Scott, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Rose. Good to be back with you. Now, let's be clear. I mean, I'm, I, I've always been uh, a supporter of school choice. Uh, I went to magnet schools growing up. And so I understand uh, that. So what specifically is the Choice Act? What, what does it do? It does a couple of things. Number one is it says to those folks who are serving our country on a military basis that if their kids find themselves in an unforming area, that they will have an opportunity to go to a charter school or a private school. They would have the fundamental option of choice to figure out where their kids will get the best How education. How is it currently set up? So if a parent has a kid, uh, if they're on a military base, what are their whatever, options now? Whatever the school is nearby or whatever you can afford. So if you cannot afford it, and you know many of our folks who are enlisted folks have trouble making the ends meet. So mm -hmm. educational choice, a private school or, or a charter school that may be too far away, they don't have the option. So mm -hmm. what we say is let's, let's do a test, let's do a pilot program with five different bases, spend $10 million to see if we actually improve the outcome of the kids whose parents are putting their lives on the line for the country. The second thing it does is it says to the kids with disabilities, special needs kids, let's make sure that you have the most options possible so that you realize your full potential. Parents love this. Superintendents even have come aboard and said this is a very good idea many times. And the kids obviously are starting to see their full potential realized. And the third part is we use a case study, the DC Opportunity Scholarship. We encourage and enhance its ability to continue to exist because when you look at the satisfaction rates of parents mm -hmm. from the DC Opportunity Scholarship, over 90%, you look at the graduation rates of kids, over 91%, comparatively speaking to other kids who are not in a choice program, 56% here in the DC area. Here's an opportunity for us to show a case study mm -hmm. over the last 10 years of why the DC Opportunity Scholarship works for half the cost of everyday public schools in DC. Opportunity scholarships, some call it vouchers as well. Uh, and then of course, uh, and I've long heard critics suggest, well, this takes money out of public schools. All of a sudden, we're seeing the focus also on charter schools. Where does the accountability come in? Because as somebody who supports charter yes. schools, one of my issues is a lack of accountability in some places because there are some bad charter schools, just like there are some bad uh, traditional public schools. I had Dr. Steve Perry, Rob Page, and Bobby Jindal, Governor Jindal, on a panel yesterday, and they all came to the same conclusion. If it ain't working, close it. At the end of the day, the goal is simply this, to improve the quality of the education, improve access to education, and at the same time, hold schools, charter schools, private schools, public schools, all accountable to producing a child that is able to learn and is able to work when they leave the school. And so, um, funding, what is, this actually, what is this going to actually cost, yes. even as a pilot program? Pilot program for the military, for our, our folks serving the country, this pilot program would cost $10 million and we've already paid for it. The second part of it is simply creating flexibility for the existing funds, the IDEA funds, which are funds specifically designed for kids with special needs. Those dollars are there. What we're simply saying is for those states who already have options, we're not dictating or mandating anything on any state. We're simply saying for those states that have options, and many states already have those options, here is another weapon in your arsenal to help those kids who are especially vulnerable uh, to not seeing their full potential realized. So we want to make sure that it happens. Here's one of the things I think is interesting. Uh, we had Howard Fuller on the show, a uh, former superintendent uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, he was, uh, he also is very much involved uh, in, in, in the choice movement. Uh, and he's with the Black Alliance yes. of Education Options. And it's interesting, he, he talked about this book about James Anderson called The Education of Blacks in the South from 1860 to 1935. And what Anderson lays out is that African Americans, uh, from the beginning, uh, coming out of slavery, uh, supported the notion of choice because that was saying, look, these schools won't educate our kids, we have to create our own. Same thing happened during the Jim Crow movement. So do you believe that, uh, that this notion of school choice uh, has gotten caught up in this battle between teachers unions and uh, and political parties and ideology as opposed to 
uh, what history has actually shown when it comes to black folks making the decisions what's best for their kids. And there's no doubt that the t today's <clears throat> argument has nothing to do with children. It has to do with unions. It has to do with partisan politics. But it doesn't have to do with how do we better educate the kids who are desperately looking for hope in this country and in this time. I'm going to change that conversation. I'm going to make sure that my focus are on the kids. If you looked at my, my forum yesterday, we had 300 kids, about 300 kids, about 85% of those kids were African Americans, and they asked me questions afterwards, and their questions weren't about you know, school choice, they were about what does my future look like if I really do what I'm supposed to do in this new opportunity that I have? Those kids were talking about their future, and for those who say those kids should wait until we fix the entire public school system, that kid can't wait. They were young one time. So we should give them every opportunity to succeed. And frankly, the way I look at it is if there, if there are public schools, if there are charter schools, if there are magnet schools, all of part of the public school apparatus, let's, give, let's encourage that too. I'm not suggesting that we should only look at this through one prism, mm -hmm. my prism. I'm suggesting that every child should have every opportunity to go to the school that lets them succeed. Think about folks like Jalen Rose or David Robinson, folks who are sponsoring charter schools or Pitbull, others that are getting involved. Let us not forget that charter schools and magnet schools is school choice in the public setting. I'm all right with that. Okay. Sharon Scott, we still appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Appreciate it.